Hello everyone and welcome to Research Methods Lesson 13 where we're going to be looking at choosing and constructing different types of graphs. As part of the A-level syllabus you need to be aware of different ways of presenting and displaying quantitative data. You'll need to know when to use, how to interpret and in some cases how to draw a variety of different charts and graphs which is exactly what we are going to be going through in this video. So to start us off, one of the simplest ways of representing data is in the form of a summary table. Now, to be honest with you, 9 times out of 10, these summary tables are used in exams to ask students to interpret a set of results. For example, the table on the screen suggests that more revision leads to better scores because the mean exam score is higher in the condition that revised. However, it has become very popular in exams to include long answer research methods questions and it's possible that a summary table could appear in one of those. You could get asked to present a set of results in a summary table as part of research methods essays or even as part of a question asking you to write the results section for a psychological report. And if you haven't come across psychological reports yet, don't worry, you will. If that's the case, it's important to note just a couple of things. First off, summary tables do not simply use raw scores, but they use scores that have been converted into descriptive statistics, hence why they're called a summary table, because the results have been summarized. Also, it's important to bear in mind that it's standard practice to include a summary paragraph beneath the table explaining the results. Now, speaking of simple ways of representing quantitative data brings me nicely onto bar charts. Bar charts are used when you have discrete data, and discrete data means that your data is split into categories. Okay, so your example on the left of the screen there is what is your favorite type of movie? People are only in one category. Okay, so that is categorical data. And when you're constructing a bar chart, there's just a few things that you have to bear in mind. So make sure that you have a clear title. Make sure that the bars are not touching because the fact that they're not touching indicates that the data is discrete and not continuous. Your axes and your bars should be clearly labeled and where possible operationalized. So as you can see on the Y axis, I have operationalized my mean improvement by stating that it's a depression score. Also, the scores on your y-axis should be separated by equal intervals. Note how I've gone 0, 10, 20. You shouldn't go 0, 10, 30, 45, or whatever. Okay, so make sure your intervals are equal. Our next type of graph is a scattergram. Now, as discussed in the video on correlations, scattergrams are used in correlational studies to show the relationship between two covariables. Two scores are used to plot scattergrams. One score will be the variable on the x-axis, and the other score will be the variable on the y-axis. And then once all pairs of scores have been plotted, the scattergram will give you some kind of indication of both the direction and the strength of the relationship. You could get a positive correlation, a negative correlation, or no correlation at all. As it stands, the correlation that you've got on the screen there is a positive one. Now, if you're asked to construct a scattergram in an exam, you'll be presented with a study, and the results from that study will be in a results table for you you'll then have to sketch an appropriate graph to display those results. But be aware, in many cases, you won't actually be told to draw a scattergram, and it will be down to you to realize that you need to draw a scattergram or that that's the appropriate display. So just make sure you double check before you just start sketching any graph. Okay, so make sure you know what it is that you're supposed to be drawing. And again, there are certain things that you need to be aware of when you are drawing them. And they're fairly similar to a bar chart. So, make sure your chart has got a clear title. Make sure your axes are labelled with units. And make sure that the unit intervals are equal. When you're plotting your points, make sure that you plot them accurately. Make sure you use a pencil. Remember that both axes are numbers. And only draw a line of best fit if you're required to do so. 
Okay, the final chart type you need to know about is a histogram. Now, some of you will already know about histograms from maths, but they work slightly differently in psych because you won't actually have to calculate a frequency density in psychology. So actually, it's much easier. You use a histogram to display continuous data. So data such as weight, height, scores on a test, whatever. Okay, your x-axis is made up of equal sized intervals of a single category and your y-axis is the frequency within each interval. So the one on the screen now is weight and you can see that it starts at 30 and it goes 30 to 40, 40 to 50, 50 to 60 and so on and so on. When you're constructing your histogram, you have to remember that the bars touch each other, which shows that the data is continuous rather than discrete. So it's the opposite to a bar chart. The x-axis is made up of equal sized intervals of a single category. As you can see, it's 10 kilogram intervals. And the number of times a particular weight is recorded appears on the y-axis. Okay, so that's your frequency of each individual weight. And again, just like with the other types of chart, there are certain things that you have to remember, which I've put on the screen there for you. So things like a clear title, equal intervals, labeled axes, and so on and so on. Okay, so I'm going to leave it there. Initially, I was going to be talking about distributions in this video as well, but it would have made it too long. So I've made a separate video covering normal and skewed distributions, and the link to that should already be on your screen. So you can check it out if you're interested. So thank you very much for watching. I hope it's all been useful. And of course, if you have any questions, just pop them in the comments section below. Thank you.